In this video, we're going to talk about the most important things that you should know about the new Apple Watch Series 4. So today in Apple's annual September event, they announced the first actual redesign to the Apple Watch. Since it was announced in 2014, the Apple Watch really hasn't looked any different. But today that changed as it was kind of iPhone 10 -ified. So much like the iPhone 10, the Apple Watch was redesigned to increase the size of the screen while not increasing the size of the package. So the 38 millimeter watch is now 40 millimeters and the 42 is now 44. So this means that the total area of screen has increased by 30% on the smaller device and 35% on the larger size. And of course, to accompany this new update, there are many new watch faces, as tend to be released every time an Apple Watch is updated, or even as often as the operating system is updated. But there are a lot of new dynamic wallpapers that take advantage of the boundaries created by this new larger screen, and that look really quite nice, actually. So from a design standpoint, the other thing that changed is the back of the device, which is now made out of black ceramic and sapphire crystal. So the reason that they made the back out of ceramic this year is because having that ceramic back allows for better cell service, which allows you to get better reception if you have a cellular plan associated with your Apple Watch. So one of the other things that was announced was a new louder speaker and a better microphone. So the microphone has been relocated to the same side as the digital crown, to allow a phone call to be going more smoothly because the speaker and microphone aren't directly next to each other. Now, additionally, the speaker is a lot louder and more clear, and this is designed to aid in phone calls, but also in Hey Siri and Siri commands so that you can hear Siri's responses better. <laughs> that was good timing. Now, speaking of the digital crown, which is now right next to the microphone, the crown was actually updated this year, which I think is long overdue because it was an interesting concept when the Apple Watch came out, but it didn't really have too much depth to it. But now the crown has haptic feedback. So this allows for a crisp mechanical feel when you're scrolling through menus or browsing around the watch using the digital crown. Now the digital crown also helps with a couple of other things that we'll talk about when I get to these sensors. But first we have to talk about the new S4 chip. So every year with a new Apple Watch, there comes a new generation of chip, and they happen to coincide with the series of Apple Watch that we're on, so this year is the S4 chip. So this is now a dual-core 64-bit chip that is supposedly about twice as fast as the S3 chip that was introduced last year. Now, moving on to the sensors, there are a variety of new and improved sensors in the Series 4 Apple Watch, starting with the gyroscopes and accelerometers. So these have been adapted so that they can actually detect if you've taken a fall. Basically, there are three different ways that you can fall. You can either fall straight down, you can trip forward and use your hands to brace, or you slip back and your hands tend to go up in the air. So the Apple Watch can detect which of these is happening and it will determine whether or not you've had a fall. Now at this point, it'll give you a notification on the watch that will alert you of your potential fall and ask if you would like to contact emergency services. Now this is obviously something that you can dismiss if it's triggered by mistake. However, if you don't move for a full minute, it will assume that you've fallen and are unresponsive and it will automatically initiate a 911 call. So basically it's a built-in life alert. If you've fallen and you can't get up, your Apple Watch can do it for like 800 times the money. So moving on with the improved sensors, the optical sensor, which has been with us for the entire lifespan of the Apple Watch, was upgraded pretty heavily and is now paired with a new electrical sensor. Now in the past, the optical sensor would alert you if your heart rate was too high. And now with this new improved sensor, it can alert if your heart rate is too low. And the optical sensor can also detect if you have any irregularities in your heart rate called atrial fibrillation, and it can diagnose this and give you notifications about it. Now in conjunction with the optical sensor, both on the underside of the device and on the digital crown, is a new electronic sensor. So what this new sensor does is it allows the Apple Watch to take an electrocardiogram, or ECG, right from your wrist. So Apple said that this is actually the first time that you've been able to do this in an over-the-counter product. And also, the all of the data that is taken by the Apple Watch through all the different sensors can be stored 
on your phone app in a PDF in the health application. And this can be synced with your doctor so that your doctor will have access to all of this information. So one other interesting thing about the Apple Watch was that Bluetooth 5.0 has been added to all the new devices that Apple introduced at today's event. So I expect that we'll start to see this getting introduced on Macs and certainly on the iPads that are due for a refresh. But it's very interesting to see that Bluetooth 5.0 is starting to make its way to the marketplace. So as far as pricing goes, it's gonna start at $400 for the GPS only 40 millimeter base model and that bumps up to $500 for GPS plus cellular in the base model and it can be configured as high as $850 if you want one of the new stainless steel black editions. Additionally, the Apple Watch Series 3 remains for sale on Apple's website and you can buy it for $280, which I have to say is a pretty good price considering that it's only a year outdated and that's about $120 less than what it started at last year. So that's all that you need to know about the new Apple Watch besides all the new colors and bands and stuff, but those, you know, those come and go with the wind, so that's not really that important. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think the most interesting feature, the most compelling feature of the new Apple Watch is down in the comments below. And of course, make sure to check out my other videos that I'm posting right now about the iPhone XS, XS Plus, 10s Max and the iPhone 10R. Those are all coming out at the same time. Links will be in the description and you probably saw them in the cards throughout this video. So make sure to check those out. And with that, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani. Don't forget to join my subreddit. The link is in the description down below and I will see you guys in the next video.